I think this may be the most distracting backdrop I've ever put up on a video. You're gonna feel sick just watching this and not in the usual way. Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and this isn't all about gaming, even though I've got the PS5 and the Series X hooked up at the moment. This is about what is the best TV. Rather than individual models, I wanna give you some of my top tips for how to choose the right one for you, because there is about a million things to think about, and it can all get a bit overwhelming. But if you guys do enjoy the video and find it useful, which hopefully you do, then a cheeky little like and subscribe would be very much appreciated. Okay, so tip number one, and that's two, but when is the best time to buy a new TV? Well, the answer is actually right now. Well, for me at least, as I'm filming this in mid-November, because we've got Black Friday and Cyber Monday coming up. As you would expect, these are the best times to get big discounts on the latest models. Reason being, most new TVs are announced in January at the big CES conference in Vegas, and then usually released between March and April every year, which is when you're pretty much guaranteed to be paying sticker price. But give it five or six months after launch, and you'll probably see a good 20 to 30% off. Although this year maybe pare back a little bit as we still have this ongoing chip supply shortage crisis thing. Uh, so supply is still outstripping, no, other way around. So demand is still outstripping supply. But another good way to save money and leading into tip number two very nicely is look beyond the regular big brands because the likes of TCL and Hisense are putting out some great TVs these days, which are often pretty spectacular value for money. Tip number three and size matters. I'm not gonna make a joke. I always make a joke, I'm not gonna do it this time. This is a 55 inch, this is a 65 inch, although slightly awkwardly they're on different height TV stands. But I love a big TV. It's more immersive and it helps your eyes perceive more detail, especially as we're upgrading to 4K and maybe even 8K screens. And in my experience, you're less likely to regret buying a TV that's just a little bit too big than going for one that's maybe a bit smaller than you'd like. I think the sweet spot is either a 55 or a 65 inch 4K TV, or well, at least here in the UK where we have really small houses. But the thing is, when you go above 65 into your 70s and your 80s, things often get a lot more expensive. I still wouldn't bother with 8K though. It's diminishing returns, it's very expensive, but if you do want to go for one, I would suggest at least 75 inches so you can see the difference. This next tip is for when you actually already have your TV, and that is to change the settings. It can make such a difference just playing around with it for a few minutes because a number of people I know who buy their fancy new TV and just, you know, use out of the box settings, which to be fair, aren't as terrible as they often used to be in the past, but you're gonna wanna turn off that motion smoothing unless you're watching sports, so you're not gonna get that soap opera-like effect. And God forbid if they set it up in store mode. Picking one of the presets is fine, and newer TVs often remember your choice depending on the app or the input you're using. But if you've got one of these options, then use game mode for consoles, and then for movies and TV, any kind of expert or filmmaker mode is your best bet. As these tend toward more natural tones, in line supposedly with what the original filmmakers wanted, my next tip is actually pretty simple, and maybe unless you've got one of these sky glass TVs, because the built-in speakers are incredible actually, get a soundbar or a separate speaker system, anything, because if you're gonna spend a ton of money on a new TV with fantastic picture quality, you want the sound to match. To be fair, some pricier TVs do have better quality and bassier speakers and attempt a bit of surround sound, but I really would suggest getting a good soundbar. And plenty of speakers and soundbars allow you to connect to the TV via an ARC or an eARC enabled HDMI port, which is so much more convenient because you can then use your TV remote to control your sound, but I think my personal favorite right now is this, the Sonos Arc. It's a little bit pricey, but I think it's incredible. So for this video, LG actually very kindly offered to sponsor the little integration ad break part in the middle, which we're gonna go into now. And that is all about a TV, which is actually not in here. It is over there in my living room. So come with me. So this is the 77 inch LG G1. And quite honestly, I will take any opportunity I can to show off this TV. It is incredible. The G1, AKA the gallery design TV, not only has a unique flush wall mount, so it sits right up against your wall, although right now I've got a nice gradient light strip behind it, but this along with the Z1 series have LG's next generation OLED Evo technology, which combines the Alpha 9 Gen 4 AI processor 4K, new improved materials, and an even brighter screen. And of course, being an OLED, we have the self-lit pixels, so we get that infinite contrast, no haloing, and just the perfect blacks that you can't get on a normal LED LCD. So as you would expect, picture quality on this is top-notch. 
The processor intelligently upscales content to 4K and also optimizes both the picture and the sound quality. We also get Dolby Vision IQ and Dolby Atmos support for a proper cinematic experience, and Motion Pro helps reduce motion blur. I actually reviewed this a few months ago, and at the time I called it the best gaming TV you can buy, and I stand by that even now. 4K, 120fps, HDMI 2.1, G-Sync and FreeSync, as well as super fast response times and low input lag, which is actually really important. And this game optimizer menu gives you all the game specific functions in one place. So check out LG's huge range of OLED TVs, including this OLED EVO G1. There's some great Black Friday deals, and I'll leave a link in the description below. Okay, we're back. Let's talk about tip number, what are we on? Tip number six, <laughs> picture quality. In my experience, the biggest determiner of picture quality is how deep the blacks can get, which is basically the contrast ratio, and also the brightness measured in nits. And this is even more important when it comes to HDR movies and games. In fact, I'd argue that good HDR, especially in content with Dolby Vision or HDR10+, is one of the biggest upgrades TVs have had in the last decade. Although the good news is that all 4K TVs do at least support some basic HDR formats. But if you can, try and get a TV that supports Dolby Vision HDR, which most do these days, uh, except, well, frustratingly, most Samsung TVs, but Dolby Vision is one of the most common and most popular HDR formats. All this brings me to tip number seven. S seven. Um, <laughs> I've completely lost my train of thought now. Where are we? All this brings me to the next question. Which TV technology, what panel type is best? And to keep things simple, you've got your basic LED LCD TVs, which have generally quite poor contrast, rubbish viewing angles, but are nice and cheap. The next tier up is a bit more convoluted. You've got your quantum dots, your nano cells, and even mini LED TVs. These are more expensive, but usually with higher brightness, better contrast, and more dimming zones on the backlight, so you get less blooming and more accurate colors. But at the top, it's still pretty much a two horse race between OLED and QLED. We do have some very exciting new technologies coming soon, like micro LED from Samsung, but that's ridiculously expensive and probably five years off from actually being in your living room. As I mentioned in the ad break, with an OLED, each pixel can turn itself on and off. So you have near enough infinite contrast, super inky blacks, almost no blooming or light bleed, and incredible viewing angles. The only real compromise with OLED is it can't match the brightness of a good QLED, with the best ones from Samsung. But with each generation, they do get better. If I had to take one to a desert island, well, actually, it'd probably go with the QLED because the higher brightness would help drown out the sun, which is presumably overhead and also assuming I've got power and a you know, signal. You can't go wrong with either, but for my money, assuming you can maybe control the lighting in your living room, you even got a super bright window behind you or something, I would go OLED. Both technologies still come at a premium though, although something like this LG 55 inch C1, which is actually my TV of the year, now you can get for less than 1200 pounds. Back to gaming though, because a big reason a lot of people wanna buy a new TV is to pair it with their shiny new PS5 or Xbox Series X. And while you can play your games on any TV from the last you know, 10, 15 years, anything with an HDMI port near enough, there are some pretty big benefits to paying a little bit more and getting a new TV with some gaming features. To get the best experience, look for at least one HDMI 2.1 port. That makes it a lot more future-proof, but also you'll want support for 120Hz, often called VRR or variable refresh rate. Also, if possible, look out for FreeSync and or G-Sync to uh, smooth out your gameplay and reduce screen tearing. And also keep a lookout for ALLM or Auto Low Latency Mode, which the TV will switch to when it detects a console input. And that helps turn off all the background processing rubbish and gives you the best response time. The problem is though, HDMI 2.1 TVs, which are fantastic future-proof things that got very bright all of a sudden, uh, are very expensive. And really there's only a handful of games that support 4K at 120 FPS, which that unlocks. There are a bunch of other benefits to 2.1, which, well, I could spend a whole video talking about. But in terms of real world gaming, HDMI 2.0, which you have on every TV really, is absolutely fine. You can still get 120 FPS if your TV supports it, but just at a lower resolution. And having low response times and a good picture quality is far more important. Tip number nine, and all new TVs are smart TVs, which basically means you can connect it to the internet and then they'll have the usual range of streaming apps, although not all TVs have all the apps. That's worth checking. 
I'm sure you guys already know this, but if you do have an older non-smart TV, then get a Roku stick or an Amazon Fire 4K or Google Chromecast because they are incredibly cheap ways of getting access to streaming apps without buying a whole new TV. And finally, tip number 10, read reviews, not spec sheets. For example, this Sky Glass TV, which I reviewed recently, is technically a quantum dot mini LED, which sounds great, but in reality, the brightness peaks at around 600 nits, which is pretty average. Plus it's only 60 hertz with no real gaming features. It's not bad for the price, but as I say, just reading the specs doesn't necessarily give you an idea of what the picture quality is actually like. So it's worth reading or watching a few reviews of the TV you're thinking about first to get past all that marketing jargon. But what about you? What TV are you using at the moment? And also, are you thinking about upgrading to a new one anytime soon? And if so, what would you go for? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I do hope you found that slightly useful. And if you did, as I say, a little like and subscribe would be very much appreciated. And I'll see you next time right here on The Tech Chat.